Hey guys, Alchemist here. I hope you've all had an incredible week, and I just wanted to start off by saying a big thank you for now having hit 1,000 subscribers. This was a goal I had set for myself to achieve by the end of the year, which came early for me this year, which is nice, and I am now setting my targets on 5k. So if you do have any friends who aren't yet currently subscribed and are interested in Forex trading, self-development, health and fitness, please do share my channel around so that we can continue to grow and so I can continue to deliver this amazing content to you all. So as a thank you, I am going to be actually showing a few trades that I took this week. Uh, so this was my first week back to proper live trading, which is really nice. And on Monday, I took a break even and then a 7R plus, And that was all for the week. I didn't take any additional trades as I was spending a little bit more time working on the website, which has now been completely revamped. So if you haven't yet had a look at that, uh, please do have a look. The link will be in the description below. And as mentioned in last week's video that I was going to be making an announcement today. And if you haven't yet seen the community post that I put up yesterday, Millennial Wealth Group is now finally accepting monthly memberships. So it has been something you guys have been asking for for quite some time. And I have finally instilled it into the community so that you can actually join the course, join the Discord and join the whole community for just $75 per month. And the current promotion that we're running at the moment is if you are to join on that monthly membership and within the first month, you do realize the amount of value in there, which I'm sure you will, and want to upgrade to the full access, that $75 that you've paid for the first month will be taken off the total sum of your one-time payment of $565, meaning the only additional thing you'll need to pay after the first month is $490, rather than paying for the month separately and then the upfront fee as well. So that will not be the case moving forward. It is only just a limited time promotion to get everyone in. And to also remind you that in the next 10 members to join, you will be receiving the financial fundamentals as well as the self-mastery series completely free, which will be released next year. So as a thank you, I am going to be showing those three trades that I've taken here. Uh, and these were also posted on my Instagram. So if you haven't yet followed me on there, the link is in the banner of my YouTube channel, but I will also be posting it in the description of this video below. So please make sure that you are following me there just so that you see these as they're announced, as well as to see some little insights into the course and the Discord, which will be posted daily on the stories there. So let's crack into it. So I've just replayed one week's worth of price action on AU and we're starting off on the weekly just as we always do. Now, if you have been watching my videos, you should exactly know where the weekly supply and demand that we're currently trading from are. So this here is that demand and the supply is where we're currently in and looking like we've swept here, which is, are these buy to sell weeks. So on the weekly time frame, that's all we need to do. These uh, buy to sell weeks, these have actually interacted with this weekly demand here. So just to show you the interaction as that's one of the most important things we look for. There's a slight sweep there, prices push back up and then it's failed, but we went to see that body close below. So where the body closed below and where the supply, sorry, where the demand really failed were these buy to sell wicks. And that's why these are the important significant supply for me to be identifying. We don't need to mark that up on the weekly. All that we need to do is the weekly demand and the weekly supply. And that is what we've done here. Let's jump down to the daily time frame. Now the daily break of structure was here. So this is our daily boss. The daily low is simply just the lowest point below this line. And the daily high has not yet been set as we haven't yet had a bearish pullback of greater than 110 pips for AU. On the daily time frame, that is all we need to do and we remain systematic. So that is all we will do. And we will go down to the four hour time frame. So that's the daily boss. Just got to make these lines neater. Now, in terms of our four hour break of structure, it was here. So this here is our most recent four hour boss. Why that's the case is this here was the recent four hour high after we had this bearish pullback greater than 90 pips. So this here would have been our four hour high. Mark this out as a four hour high just to show you. Then once we had this single candle closing above, so remember on the four hour, I personally, for my strategy, only need to see one candle closing above to confirm a boss. Whereas on the 15 minute, I would need to see two. And if you are new to this channel and you haven't yet seen my market structure video, I will be posting a link to it in the top right corner here, where there's a lot of insights shown in there. So please do go ahead and watch that if you are interested in marking up structure in a systematic way. So once this four hour high here broke, this became a four hour boss. Now to see our four hour high, the new one being cemented, we'd need to see a bearish pullback greater than 90 pips. So at this point here, we have that. So at the time, this wouldn't have been a four hour boss. This would have just been a four hour high. Now, once this four hour high then broke here with this candle close, then we had a new four hour boss. We can delete the new four hour boss line and we can identify our four hour low. 
So we've got our four hour low, we've got our four hour boss, but we don't yet have our four hour high. To confirm our four hour high, we'd need to see a bearish pullback of at least 90 pips. So we don't yet have that here, but we can start marking out some POIs. So the easiest ones to spot straight away are always gonna be the extremes. Okay, so we can take this with the bottom of the next wick as our demand. We've got this here wick, okay, which is the extreme supply that was the previous four hour high. And then we've created these buy to sell wicks. So the first wick swept above, push price back down, swept below, and then we've closed above. So this is the flip zone of that four hour boss. This is a refined supply. And we have this inside bar here, which we'll have a look a little bit closer at in just a second. Okay, so with this here, to mark this up as a valid zone to be looking at, it would need to have interacted with something to the left. So if we look at this here, we can say, okay, well, what has this actually interacted with? Well, we can see this candle above here has just very slightly swept the liquidity above this candle. Okay, so this is a supply zone, which led to a break of structure at the time. Okay, when, when this low failed. And then just to confirm that this itself is a valid point, this would also have needed to interact with something to the left as well. So we can get rid of that. That's where we know our current POI is. If we're looking at this as a demand zone, which pushed price higher, take this candle like that. We'd need this demand zone to have interacted with a supply zone to the left. So let's see if we do have some interaction to the left here. Looks like it was quite some time ago. Okay, but we do, yeah, we have a very nice POI here. Which has also swept the liquidity below all of these lows. Beautiful, so this demand zone, we drag it out to the right. Is what price interacted with here to push price up however what we can see here is it failed to create a new higher high we swept the liquidity above this high and then essentially this demand failed so this is a valid supply zone and if we drag this out to the right when price did interact with it we did have a reaction and then we created a range in the lower time frame uh, represented by this inside bar and then we had the next two candles breaking above. So this does have interaction and this is a flip of that supply zone. So we can't yet mark out where our four hour high is as we haven't yet had a four hour bearish pullback of greater than 90 pips. And something we've been talking about with the members in the course is should we be trading when we don't yet have a confirmed four hour range? So it's a really good question and ideally the best times to trade is when we do have a confirmed four hour range because when we don't, we don't exactly know where premium and discount are. So we don't know if we're in a well-priced or a poorly priced area to be taking trades from. However, there can be very long periods of time before a four hour uh, range is completely formed in certain scenarios. So we don't wanna have to be waiting on the sidelines until that point. As long as there is a 15 minute range in place, my members and myself can trade. So that is a rule I've created for myself that I will not take a trade unless a 15 minute range has been formed, meaning we have a 15 minute boss, 15 minute high and 15 minute low. So we can leave this here as a reference. If price does choose to turn bearish from this point, then our four hour high would be this point, meaning that this would be the first demand zone, which is in discount. So let's go to the 15 minute and have a look at this one. Okay. So looking at this here, I believe it was this pullback, yep, which was greater than 22 pips, and then we broke above. And then we have this one. Okay, so that was the actual 15 minute boss. So we have a bearish pullback there. This would have closed one to above, yep, perfect. So this was our 15 minute boss. 15 minute low is simply just the lowest point below this line. And 15 minute high was confirmed after we had a bearish pullback of greater than 22 pips. So once we've set this high, the minute we had a pullback of 22 pips at this point here, this confirmed our 15 minute high. 
So we can actually identify our whole 15 minute range, which is good as I will never take a trade unless that 15 minute range has been confirmed. So let's have a look at this range and let's identify some POIs. So we can always take the extreme straight away. As just mentioned, it's the easiest one to do straight away. We can see that that's where price is coming into here. But what we can also notice is that we have this very large wick, which mitigated a very large portion of this demand. So we can just be taking the unmitigated portion, which essentially would just be this wick. And we can identify this next wick a little bit closer. So what we can see here is this would have created a supply range. So these two bullish candles before then closing below were a supply range. So this is the whole range. And then this would be the extreme of that supply range. So we can identify both of the POIs, but we can also see that once we've interacted with this overall range, we've pushed up, absorbed orders, and we see that through the uh, representation of the bottom of the next wick, and then we close the buff. So this here is actually a demand flip zone as well. So we have that as demand. As we follow price above, We'd like to see zones that have swept liquidity. So what we can see here is there are quite a few of them. So we've got this one here. Okay, and then we can take that wick, draw it out to the right. And that wick here has also swept liquidity there. Identify this wick, drag that out. You can see it happens again. one too and then once we've tapped into these we had this very slight pause where we created these buy to sell weeks however these buy to sell weeks are of no importance to me as they don't actually interact here we just sort of blast straight through similarly these buy to sell weeks did not interact with any sort of supply range it was just simply imbalance so this is also of no importance to me so we've marked out all of these demands okay we can see that we had like a demand chain forming here and then if we look a bit higher, we will have the extreme supply. Okay, again, it has been mitigated there, so we can then take this one, which again has been mitigated there. So the last unmitigated portion will be these buy to sell weeks, but we can just take this whole inside bar as well. And in terms of order flow, well, at the extreme is here where we send a bearish. So this would be the liquidity grab part of the chalk. And then the chalk would be confirmed once we have a body close below here. Personally, I will always take a body close for AU. On AU, I have seen weeks being respected for a confirmation of a change of character. However, personally on AU, I will never take a week as a change of character and will always, <clears throat> always wait for a body close. So looking at this now, 15 minute structure is bullish and four hour structure is bullish. However, we haven't yet set our four hour high. So we can be sort of anticipating that price would want to be giving us a bearish pullback to confirm that four hour high. But remember, price doesn't care if we have our four hour high to trade or not. Price is gonna go where it's most valued and where it can have most of its orders filled. So we just follow price. We're not gonna completely wait until we have that bearish pullback because again, like I mentioned, price doesn't care about us traders. We're not institutional traders. Um, we are just simply, trading we're not even trading like the banks i'm not going to get into that argument here however we are just going to react with the information given to, to us we're not going to predict and wait for certain things to occur in the market so looking at this once we've had this bearish change of character from the extreme premium of the 15 minute leg as price returns to it as long as price doesn't turn bullish in terms of order flow which in this case it actually has so once we had this inside bar being taken There's our chalk up. So we couldn't take shorts until we had a confirmed bearish boss, sorry, a bearish chalk at the top as well. So that would look like this. We'd need to see the bottom of this candle be closed out with a body close. So that at the moment is where we would see our chalk down. So at this point, we can potentially be waiting for that change of character to occur to then take a trade into a demand zone lower. So this would be that demand zone we'd be interested in. So let's just have a look as to what we get. And what we'd be tapping into here, I understand that we do have this gap in the market, but essentially it would be this flip zone right before the bearish chalk occurred, which would have interacted with this as demand. Beautiful. So the second we tap into this on the 15 minute, 
we can't yet be looking for trades until we had 15 minute realign bearish in terms of its order flow as overall structure on both the four hour and the 15 minute was still bullish. So let's have a look as to whether we're going to have a bearish boss, sorry, bearish chalk. We've set a new higher high. So once we've set this new higher high, we can have a look. We'd have to wait until that occurs to then confirm our bearish chalk. Okay, that would still remain at the same point. Beautiful. So now we've had a bearish change of character from the extreme supply and we're still in premium of the 15 minute range. On the one minute, I was looking to take shorts from this area, but we didn't actually get anything play out. So I come to the charts at 12 p.m., which is when uh, Asian session opens here. So it would have been at this point here. And what I was looking at, this was the change of character that I was waiting to see occur. And I'll just mark this out to there. But that is also one of the liquidity models, which I'm not going to be explaining in this in this video here, that uh, all the members of the course will understand why I've marked this out like that. So once we'd had that liquidity then taken, I was waiting for a one minute change of character, which because of how bullish these candles were, was quite a large change of character to be waiting for. So it was from there to here. This would have been the demand of that change of character in terms of the supply of it the flip would be this these buy to sell weeks there is a week below here i believe the close is nine six four and the low is nine six three so there is 0 0.1 of a pip below as a week mark this out as refined demand sorry refined supply and once this broke, I was looking at this for entries. However, when I was looking to take the whole POI, the stop loss was around four pips, I believe. So at 25% of this range, looking to take a stop loss here. First, uh, sorry, entry. Firstly, there was no entry. The only entry was from the open with a four pip stop loss. And the issue that created for me is where I was targeting was going to be less than 5R, which I will never take a trade unless I've got at least 5R potential in it. So there was no short from this region for me. So I can get rid of that. This was the one of the flip zones that we identified. Another one is this one here. So we had this as a demand flip, which in, interacted with this supply. And gave us this POI. Now all the members of the course get a risk management module as well, which identifies for them how many trades they're willing to take per day based on the overall risk they're allowed, allowing themselves to take and the drawdown limits as well if they are looking to take fund and challenges or anything like that. So depending on that would depend on which one of these entries or how many of them they would be taking, whether it was just going to be the extreme or one of the flips. And if it were one of the flips, are there certain rules and criteria that the flip must meet before you place a limit on it? So all of that is explained in the course. However, in this scenario, we didn't get an entry here and price just never retraced to one of the higher zones to allow us to get in. So what we can identify here is we had a liquidity sweep, very, very minor, but this high was higher. So we had this as a sweep. And this is a very minor one minute boss. Okay. So I was interested in this zone, especially because it had a lot of inducement built up right below it. Okay, but as again, what you're about to see is it just never came to give us an entry there, which is fine. Price won't always come back to the zones we think it should. So then once we've now interacted with this 15 minute demand, I wanted to have a look as if there were going to be any long opportunities. So whilst keeping in mind that order flow here on the 15 minute was bearish after we had this bearish chalk from the top, what can we see? 15 minute structure and four hour structure were both bullish. We were in discount of the four hour range and we've come into an unmitigated demand zone. So based off the flowcharts we've created here at Millennial Wealth Group, this is a valid trade to be taking from the demand into the next unmitigated supply zone. So let's have a look at the one minute once we've now tapped into this on the 15. And again, in terms of liquidity models, so I have created six of them and I need to see at least one of them play out before I look to take a trade. And I will never take a trade unless one of them does. All of that has been broken down for you guys in the course. So if you are interested, at least to suss it out and have a look at what's inside, 
just join the monthly membership. And as mentioned at the beginning of the uh, as at the beginning of the video, if you do and you do choose to then upgrade to the full membership, that first monthly payment will be deducted from the overall price. So once this heat was swept, which was the next candle, I believe, there we go. And again, we want to see evidence of liquidation. And what I mean by that is a strong wick and a push in the opposite direction. Some people like to call it a V-shaped reaction. Essentially, I want to see that this was a valid liquidity pool that once price tapped into it, it gave it enough fuel to push away. So in this case here, we do see that occur. Okay. And then now if we're waiting to see one minute order flow realign bullish to take a long, the one minute chalk I'd want to see happen would be this one. So I don't take inside bars on the one minute for a chalk, only on the 15. This would be the liquidity grab. This would be the chalk up. Play one more candle and this one close with the body above. Very nice bullish engulfing. Again, evidence of liquidation. We're seeing price pushing away very aggressively. So what I was looking at here is we could be looking at this as a POI, covering the bottom of this week as well. Mark this out as a demand zone take 25% of this range. Okay. And then let's see if we can set a limit here. I want to be covering this low by 0 0.3. So this low here is 779. So I would want to go to 776, which is up there. And I'm happy to still play this with a two and a half pip stop loss. So it means I just, I'm able to push my entry a little bit higher. Or maybe just drop it like this one. Now, if we do get tagged into here, so let's just first have a look if we do. We are now tagged in. In terms of entries, as mentioning before, what I like to do is when I'm taking a long, I want to see where the potential shorts are because that would potentially be a place where price could stall and re reject. So for me, it was this zone which I had highlighted previously. So that was actually my target. I wanted to take 25% of this range. So firstly, as you all know, if you've watched any of my previous videos of trade breakdowns, I'll always take 25% partial at 4R. That's just automatically set on my trade assistant which means I am risk-free on the trade. And then the remainder of the trade can run till there. So let's have a look at how this trade plays out. It does dip a little bit lower. Interact here again, what's causing this interaction? Well, we have this overall supply range. Okay, the supply range fails, we break above. Next couple of candles mean we're risk-free. Yeah, there we go. So this was risk-free, I believe in about 23 minutes. Yeah, exactly 23 minutes. And then if we play a couple more candles, we see full TP being hit right there, which was 40 something minutes, I believe from memory. 37, even better. So this was a live trade that I took and so did Murph. Shout out to Murph in the Discord as well. We were breaking this down together. A few of the members actually jumped on it all together for the first sort of live session that I was in as well, which was really cool. So that was a really nice trade to start off our week. Monday morning, target has already been secured for the week. So essentially we could stop trading if we wanted to, but we love this and we kept looking for additional opportunities. So with this here, rather than taking that whole POI, I was looking at those buy to sell weeks as mentioned before. And as I zoom in here, you can see the bottom of that wick there. So again, on the 15 minute, price is still bearish in terms of order flow. Here, we didn't, or we actually did shift order flow here because we did have that inside bar. However, we came into that unmitigated supply. And the other thing I was looking at here is this low essentially was a targeted low. Why was this low targeted? Well, it failed in its objective of setting a higher high. This was the high that we would have wanted to see break to confirm this as a protected low. So we had this as a targeted low. And essentially, I didn't think that this low was be, would hold. And that's something I was announcing in the outlooks on Discord. So knowing that and knowing we've just come back up to that supply zone that I was looking to potentially be taking shorts from, which was this uh, flip zone there. Let's now see the potential short opportunities we had. So once we've tapped in there, and again, liquidity model, we, which we need to see occurring before taking a trade. This one here is another valid one, one of the six that I've created. I'm not going to go into the details here. If you're interested, you need to join the course. And then if you are waiting for that one minute chalk to occur, it would be from here to here. But as we see, price continued to push up a little bit higher. So as we set that new higher high, we wanted to see the most recent higher low fail, which is this one. And then price does it again, I believe. So we've seen another higher high being set. If 
Beautiful. So if we are looking to take a short, we'd need to see a body close below that line, which that one was still a sweep. That one was still a sweep. And this one from memory, yep, that was the one that closed. So that gave us our chalk down. This was our chalk up. Oh, sorry, not the chalk up, but it was the sweep of the high. And then in terms of where we'd be looking to take a trade from, we have this flip, but this flip did not sweep any liquidity. And we had the extreme. In this case here, I wanted to play the extreme. I didn't want to play the flip because it didn't have any inducement built up below and it didn't sweep any liquidity itself. So I had that flip there and I took 25% of it and wanted to take a two and a half pip stop loss. Which gives me an entry from there to here. Okay. So let's now first see if we get tagged into this. And we are. Couple of candles. It did get very close here. So my broker is Pepperstone and I've got a Razor account with zero spreads or ultimately zero, almost zero. I think at the time I had a 0.1 pip spread, uh, which allowed me to stay in the trade. And then in terms of our target, well, as mentioned, this low here should be targeted, right? However, we do have this 15 minute demand zone, which could still sort of give us a bit of an obstacle on the way down. So rather than holding it all the way to there, I was happy to just play 25% of this extreme on the one minute. So this would be the refinement of the 15 minute demand that we created through the formation of these candles. And just taking tw the 25% of that range, I was more than happy to play it till there, which was just over 7R, yep, 7.16R. Again, I will be taking partials off at one to four, which is just there. And taking the low from there. And then the other thing to note is once we saw this sweep above, because again, this is a sweep, we can see evidence of liquidation as we're going to push away very aggressively. So there was, with, if we're looking to see when the new chalk would form, it would be after this high was taken. And then the lowest point below there, closing with a body break, which is just there. So there's our chalk down again. So this was the first initial chalk, which gave us this entry. Now, if price does come all the way down and take my, sorry, give me my partial at 25% at 4R, meaning I was risk-free, I would look to scale in on this opportunity too. So I wouldn't scale in before my partial was taken because I don't want to be risking 2R on the one trade. However, if my partial is taken, which it was there in a very, very short amount of time, so this was 12 minutes, I can look at opportunities to also enter again, scale in, knowing that I'm already risk-free on my first, uh, my first entry. So we had this here as a flip zone. This was demand, this was the flip, not an, not an IZ, that's something for the course. So this was the demand, that was the, the supply flip. And we slightly, slightly tapped it there. But again, that was prior to the partial being taken. And so I would not have taken that entry as I don't wanna be risking 2R, <coughs> 2R on any one entry. Again, just to remain systematic, we take 25% of this as our entry. With this one in particular, if we look at this, it really doesn't make sense to have our stop loss of two and a half pips all the way up here, as if price doesn't hold here, it's not going to hold through this imbalance either. So in this particular case, I was happy to use a two pip stop loss. That's not something which is a hard and set rule that depends on the structure and the POI. So this one here, I would be playing with a two pip stop loss again from 25% of that zone. And as we we're about to see price takes our 25% partial, then tags us into that one too, having the same target on both trades. We can see the target is achieved very, very quickly. So the accumulation of both of these trades took 37 minutes. And I believe this was actually almost the exact same. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. 37 minutes each. So from beginning to end, we've got an hour and 40 minutes during Asian session. And this is 7.45 plus 7.12, which is 14.57 plus 5.48, which is just, just over 20R. So 20R in less than two hours. And personally, I risk 0.5% per trade, meaning that 20R gives me 10%. 10%, as I'm sure you're all aware, is more than enough to pass any funded challenge out there, FTMO, MFF, E8, the funded trader, whichever you fund as uh, prop firm you're looking to take an, a funded challenge with. 10R is, oh, sorry, 10% is all that you'll ever need to pass any one of them, to my knowledge at least, any of the big ones. And this is something so simple so that you can accomplish within one session, trading only one pair, 
and just following the flowcharts that I've created. Now, this isn't just a plug for my course. Of course, I think that you should be taking my course as I believe I explain the concepts in a very digestible way and so do all of my members. However, this is just something to say, if you guys are struggling at the moment, please don't give up. There were so many times along the way that I really did want to give up and I'm really like patting myself on the back and, and grateful that I didn't as it's what has allowed me to get to this point here. So this is just a reminder again that this is not a scam. Forex is not a scam. There's so much money and so much potential to be made here. But on top of the money too, it's just something that allows you to learn so much about yourself through trading as trading becomes a mirror to our soul. If, if you're a greedy person, you're going to become a greedy trader. If you're really hesitant and lack confidence, that's how you're going to trade as well. Trading has allowed me to level myself up in so many ways I never thought possible. And for that, I am forever grateful to the people who have shown me how to trade. And now I want to be able to give that back to the community, which I hope is what I'm doing through these free YouTube videos and in much, much more detail in the courses as well. So if you do have any questions, please do let me know. This is just really simple. This is a trade that I also showed on Instagram. So if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, make sure you do so you can see some live updates to the Discord and live updates on the community as well. The link to my Instagram will be in the description of the video below. Another thing I did want to mention as well is on the website, the revamp website, if you haven't seen it, please check it out in the description below. There is now the opportunity to book in a free 15 minute session call with me. If you want to have a look at how I do things, if you want to see what's inside the course, have a quick look at the discord as well. And a couple of examples of the flow charts even so that you can see exactly what you're getting yourself into so that there's nothing hidden behind closed doors. I want to show you everything that I'm going to do for you guys because I genuinely, genuinely want you guys to succeed and every member of the course will attest to that in the amount of time that I spend with each one of them trying to help them through. So this is something I'm really, truly passionate about, guys. If I can make an additional income from it too, why not? Obviously, that is something I'm also doing on the side. Trading is my main income, but I am using this educational platform as an additional source of income too. It also is something that allows me to develop my passion a bit further and also help others along the journey because I genuinely remember and understand how difficult it can be at times. And I don't want anyone to have to go through that. So if you are interested, if you're struggling, if you're almost there and there's just a couple of things that you really aren't, just aren't clicking or you're not able to consistently execute, I'm your man, hit me up, get, book in a free 15 minute call. I'll put the link to the Calendly as well in the description of this video, but have a look at the website. Everything will be laid out on there in terms of all the different pricing options, as well as all the inclusions, which should cover off all of your, uh, all of your questions. There is also a frequently asked questions section all the way at the bottom and also a free uh, lecture on liquidity on there, which if you haven't seen on YouTube is also on my channel. So I do really hope you guys have enjoyed this trade breakdown. Please let me know if you'd prefer to keep seeing these or the weekend outlooks as, or both. I will do my best. Once I am back from Bali, I am going to be hoping to do, at, at, obviously it will be at least one a week in terms of YouTube videos, but I am hoping to be able to do two YouTube videos a week. So look forward to that because it's going to be amazing. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're ready to take the leap and join the course, please do. The $75 upfront now is really, really, really just a small investment, hopefully to most of you, uh, so that you can actually just get a glimpse into what's included. And if you do have any questions, as mentioned, my email will be below, the Calendly link, my Instagram link, anything you need to contact me will be there. Guys, it's time to take change, make a change and take control of your lives. No more playing the victim card or anything like that. They've got so much access to information these days. If you're still unsure about anything, book in a free chat with me, pay for one month, see what's in there. If you don't like it, I'll send you on your way. I'll even give you a refund. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have an amazing week ahead and I look forward to hearing from you soon.